Hey everyone, it's your boy Cyan Lime, and today I'm going to be reviewing the brand new Sonic Mania, which has totally not been out for nearly two months already, and which I am reviewing promptly and on time. Okay, fine, I'm a little late to the parade, I've been away on holiday, I've had this horrible throat infection, I've dislocated my knee, still on crutches for that, um, got an operation coming up, which isn't going to be a lot of fun. But, uh, I'm doing the review now, so, uh, yeah. But you're not here to watch me make excuses for being a shitty YouTuber, you're here to watch me review the game. Uh, at least, that's what I hope you're here to watch me do, because, well, sorry to disappoint, but... Yeah, I'm gonna be reviewing Sonic Mania in this video. Um, if you didn't get that from the title. Don't really know what to say. Awkward introductions aside, let's hop right into it, and keep in mind there will be a few minor spoilers throughout the video. Sonic Mania is a classic style Sonic game inspired by the likes of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and it's pretty obvious just from looking at it for a moment that it does a hell of a better job at being a classic Sonic game than Sonic 4. To thank for this are the head developers Christian Whitehead and Simon Tomley, better known by their screen names Taxman and Stealth, who previously developed the 2011 remake of Sonic CD and the mobile releases of Sonic 1 and 2. Getting these guys to lead development of a brand new classic Sonic game was a really smart move on Sega's part, and has led to what I feel will go down as one of the best Sonic games ever made. Sonic Mania's physics, as far as I can tell, are a near perfect adaptation of the original games. Your player character carries a ton of momentum in their movement and you can reach incredible speeds by using the environment to your advantage. The only serious issue I had with the core gameplay is that you get crushed way too easily. I really hope this gets tweaked in a patch in the future, because this led to some really unfair deaths for me. Sonic Mania's level design rivals and in some ways even surpasses that of the original Sonic games. The levels switch seamlessly between high speed sections and more careful platforming parts, and don't tend to throw any surprises at you when you're moving too fast to react to them. The game has three playable characters, Sonic, Tails and Knuckles, as well as the option to play as Sonic with Tails following you, like in Sonic 2 and 3. Tails and Knuckles retain their flying and gliding abilities from Sonic Sonic 3, while Sonic keeps his ability to use different powers depending on what kind of shield he has. But instead of his air slash move from Sonic 3, Sonic gets a new move called the Drop Dash. By holding jump for a moment in midair, Sonic will get a small boost of speed when he hits the ground, kind of like a miniature spin dash. I didn't find myself using this a ton, as I found its usefulness to be kind of limited. I guess if it was too powerful you wouldn't want to get the shield, so it works that way. Even so, it's cool Sonic finally gets a jumping ability that complements his speed and helps him maintain his momentum. Another cool trick you can do when playing as Sonic and Tails together is getting Tails to fly and pick you up by holding up and pressing the jump button in midair. It can be a bit tricky to get the hang of, but I like it a lot better than the way they tried to do it in Sonic 4 Episode 2. This feels a lot more fluid and integrates with the gameplay way better. Much like in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, your experience of the game is a bit different if you play as Knuckles. In Sonic 3 and Knuckles, while Sonic and Tails' experience of the game is pretty much identical, by playing as Knuckles things change up a bit, with alternate pathways through the levels, tweaks to the level's difficulty, and different bosses to fight. Knuckles even fights an entirely different final boss to Sonic and Tails. These differences are a bit more toned down in Sonic Mania. I won't spoil anything specific, but a small handful of acts and bosses are changed for Knuckles, though the final fight is the same and there aren't quite as many alternate pathways for him. I'm really happy they made the decision to keep this tradition from Sonic 3K, as it makes the game a lot more replayable to know you'll get a slightly different experience based on the character you choose. As you can probably tell from watching the footage and listening to the music, Sonic Mania's presentation is sublime. The graphics capture the art style and visuals of the Genesis games while surpassing them thanks to no longer being held back by the hardware's limits on resolution and color palette. The game pulls off the retro pixel aesthetic perfectly, and the multi-layered scrolling backgrounds that define the classic games are back with even more detail than before, even making use of 3D effects at times. Everything makes excellent use of color, and every single stage is a genuine pleasure to look at. My only little nitpick with the graphics is that the sprites can sometimes look a bit janky and awkward when they're being resized or rotated, but again, this is just a little pet peeve of mine. Sonic Mania's soundtrack is also fantastic. It's brilliantly composed, a pleasure to listen to, and I can't really think of anything wrong with it. I guess I should also talk a bit about Sonic Mania's story. It's not a central focal point of the game, but it's there, so I guess I gotta tell you what I think of it. If you're expecting me to proceed to shower the game's storytelling in praise like I've done the graphics and music, then... 
Sorry, but I'm gonna have to disappoint you. To be honest, Sonic Mania's plot is pretty confusing and a bit difficult to make out. Like previous classic Sonic games, its approach to storytelling is a bit more indirect and attempts to communicate a relatively simple story through brief cutscenes that happen between levels. I'd argue that Sonic 3 and Knuckles actually did this a lot better than Sonic Mania because to me Sonic Mania's story came across as incoherent and a bit difficult to understand. The game starts with Sonic and Tails arriving at Angel Island like in Sonic 3. There's a giant robotic claw there surrounded by a team of egg robos. The claw extracts a pink gem from the ground, which I'm pretty sure wasn't there before, before it starts to glow and teleports Sonic and Tails to everybody's favourite Sonic level, Green Hill Zone. A team of much more colourful egg robos then fly off with the gem in tow. Now, it didn't quite register for me at the time, but these egg robos are actually all the same ones as before, transformed by the power of the gem, which the manual calls the Phantom Ruby. Now, maybe I'm just not as observant as I like to think I am, but I didn't figure this out until I took the time to read parts of the game's manual after beating the game. This isn't the only thing that I didn't catch on to until reading the manual. Watching this cutscene for the first time, I noted what a bizarre coincidence it was that Sonic and Tails were arriving at Angel Island at the precise time and location that Eggman was excavating this gemstone. The manual reveals that Sonic and Tails had actually been following some kind of energy readings that led them there, which provides more context and actually makes the intro make a bit more sense. But that's just the problem. Without the manual to explain to me what was happening, this cutscene didn't make any sense and gave me a very negative impression of the game's storytelling. Now, I I get that this is largely how it was done back in the day. The Genesis Sonic games had most of the details of their stories in the manual too. But Sonic Mania is different and there's a few reasons why that is. Firstly, Sonic Mania is a digital download game. Things aren't like what they were back in the 90s. You don't typically open up the box of your brand new game and flip through the manual before you play these days. People expect to be able to jump right into their games and let them speak for themselves. If you want to read Sonic Mania's manual, you have to look it up online, unless you happen to get one of the few physical copies given away at Comic-Con. Another point is that Sonic 3 and Knuckles was just better at storytelling. Sonic 3 kept its plot very simple, and when the game wanted to tell you something about what was happening in its plot, it did so clearly and in a way that didn't leave you confused or asking questions. Sure, reading the manual helped to get the full context, but even without it, everything still at least made sense and came across clearly. I guess what I'm trying to say is, the game should tell its own story. I shouldn't need supplemental reading materials just so that shit makes sense. Sonic and Tails were following an energy reading or something? Just put some kind of radar device on the plane or in Tails' hand and have him point forward or something. If the Phantom Ruby is transforming those egg robos, maybe show this happening rather than just having them suddenly look different when you arrive at Green Hill. My point is, show, don't tell. And definitely don't tell in a written manual completely external to the game that was only given away at Comic-Con. Another problem with Sonic Mania's storytelling lies in the transitional cutscenes between each zone. In Sonic 3 and Knuckles, every time you moved from one zone to the next, there was a short and simple cutscene showing how you get there. Sonic Mania seems to do this at first. After Green Hill Zone, the Phantom Ruby teleports you to Chemical Plant Zone, after which you travel through a pipe to Studioopolis Zone, from where you hitch a ride on Flying Battery Zone. After this though, the game largely does away with these cutscenes. Aside from two other cases, from this point onward the only transition between zones is a fade to black following you inexplicably appearing in the next level. This is really disappointing given that the game seemed to be setting up a precedent of having these cutscenes then suddenly drops them a quarter of the way into the game. And if you want to get really hardcore in criticising this, I can point out how little sense it makes that, say, Sonic goes straight from Stardust Speedway, which is canonically on Little Planet, to Hydro City Zone, which is canonically on Angel Island. And the game's ending, which I won't show just yet, I couldn't make any sense of at all, the true ending even less so. Sonic Mania presents itself as a game that has a story to tell, but fails to tell it in any kind of comprehensible way. I don't want to give Sonic Mania such a low score in the writing and story department that it detracts too much from the final score of what's otherwise a delightful game, so I'll go ahead and give it some bonus points for being very funny at times. Hydro City Act 1's boss and Metallic Madness Act 2's boss in particular were very amusing and give the game a subtle sense of humour that I think suits it very well. Sonic Mania has 12 zones with two acts each, making it a pretty reasonable length. 
Most of these are borrowed from past Sonic games, with only four brand new zones included. This isn't necessarily a bad thing though, as all the returning zones have new layouts and bosses, and many introduce new mechanics and elements that weren't there before, especially once you get to the second act. The second acts of zones in general have a very pleasing habit of changing up the status quo of the zone, even more so than in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Some zones undergo radical changes between the first and second act, and this really helps keep things fresh and interesting. The bosses vary a lot in how well they're executed. Some of them are really intuitive and have very imaginative ways you need to beat them, but there are a few annoying ones too. In particular, Mirage Saloon Act 1's boss seemed really clunky and inconsistent with when it would let you hit it, and Oil Ocean Ocean Act 2's is just kind of unfair, considering that all your rings fall into nothingness when you get hit, which is particularly hard to avoid. In general though, Sonic Mania's boss fights get a thumbs up. They're mostly very well done and often very unique, not being afraid to experiment with new ideas rather than just play it safe all the time. A fun one worth mentioning is Chemical Plants Boss, where you take on Eggman in Puyo Puyo as a reference to Dr. Robotnik's mean bean machine. Another is Mirage Saloon's Boss, where the Heavy Magician fights you by transforming into Fang from Sonic Triple Trouble and Bean and Bark from Sonic the Fighters. I kinda wanna see Fang make an appearance proper as a boss fight or something if another game like Sonic Mania ever comes out. He's got a lot of character and never really got used to his full potential, I feel. While playing through the game's levels, you'll encounter portals to bonus stages and special stages. Anytime you pass a checkpoint with 25 rings or more, a portal will appear to enter a bonus stage. These are based on the Blue Sphere special stages from Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles, but rather than being rewarded with Chaos Emeralds for beating them, you get these silver medals, or gold ones if you collect all the rings. The game at no point shows you how many of these medals you've collected, or even that collecting them even does anything, simply hurling you back into the stage you came from after you touch them, but rest assured they do have a purpose. If you go into the extras screen from the main menu, you can see how many medals you've collected, up to 32, or one for each bonus stage you can access. As you reach certain milestones, you'll unlock extra content such as a sound test mode, the ability to play Mean Bean mode or Blue Spheres whenever you want, and alternate abilities for Sonic, like the Air Slash from Sonic 3 or the Super Peel Out from Sonic CD. The catch with these extra abilities is that you can only enable them in no save mode, which kind of limits the enjoyment you can get out of them. I get that using these moves isn't the legit way to play the game, but it's a single player game, there's no reason to bar me from making a save file with them, just mark the file file as a cheat file or something if you really have to. I also kinda wish the game gave some kind of feedback after you collect a medal. Maybe a screen showing how many medals you've collected, followed by a message letting you know if you've unlocked anything, rather than waiting until after you go back to the main menu. I can also kinda understand why they didn't do this though, because being in the bonus stages takes up enough of your time as it is. Which brings me to my other problem with the bonus stages, there's too damn many of them. No, I don't have a problem with there being 32 different layouts to play on, that's awesome. My problem is just how much of your total gameplay time ends up being in these stages. There are a lot of checkpoints in each act, and the 25 ring requirement to enter really isn't that much. As a result of this, I found myself ending up in bonus stages constantly, sometimes up to 5 times in one act. I get that they're optional and you can ignore the portal if you want to, but when those sparkles are spinning above the checkpoint you kind of have to jump into them, know what I mean? I'm not exactly sure how I'd solve this other than upping the ring requirement to 50 or something. Maybe having two different kinds of checkpoints, one that can send you to the bonus stage and another that can't? I don't know. Sonic Mania also of course has special stages where you can earn the 7 Chaos Emeralds, which can be accessed by jumping into giant rings hidden in the game's levels. Basically you have to chase a UFO around a course while collecting blue spheres to speed up and rings to refill your timer, while avoiding obstacles and falling off the course. The special stages are a lot rarer than the bonus stages and they take a lot of getting used to as well. I only managed to get 3 emeralds by the first time I beat the game. Thankfully there's a portal in Studiopolis Act 1 that you can get to within a few seconds of starting the stage, so I ended up just restarting that over and over again until I'd gotten the 3 emeralds I was missing. To be honest, this got tedious pretty quickly and I found myself wishing there was a way to jump into the special stages directly from the save screen after beating the game. It's a good thing the special stages are at least kind of fun, because otherwise I don't think I could have brought myself to do this kind of grinding. In classic Sonic tradition, collecting all 7 Chaos Emeralds lets you enter Super Mode. Even Tails and Knuckles get to go super again, which is pretty neat. As Sonic, you also get to fight an extra final boss and unlock an alternate ending. I'm gonna briefly talk about this, so if you'd like to avoid spoilers, you can skip to the timestamp displayed on the screen. 
Put simply, the final boss sucks and the true ending sucks too. In the final boss, you play as Supersonic and Eggman and the Heavy King take turns appearing on the screen. When you ram your face into one of them, they'll fly away and the other will appear. Basically, the two of them will just take turns getting headbutted by Supersonic until they're both defeated. Eggman flails his arms around a bit and the Heavy King fires projectiles at you that you need to avoid, but once you've figured out the timing to avoid these attacks, the fight just becomes a bit of a repetitive drag. The ending cutscene is exactly the same as the regular one, except instead of Sonic standing with tails and knuckles, he gets sucked through a portal generated by the Phantom Ruby, presumably as a tie-in with Sonic Forces. Also. Little Planet from Sonic CD is there for some reason, and it's Chain Breaks? I really don't understand the connection to the rest of the story here. I guess I'll just chalk it up to Sonic Mania's abysmal storytelling again. Back to the Sonic Forces tie-in, if you don't already believe me about that being the case, take a listen to the sound effect when the Phantom Ruby activates. <laughs> Now, listen to Infinite from Sonic Forces using his power in one of the Sonic Forces promotional videos. Still don't believe me? Okay, how about this? Listen to the main theme of Sonic Forces, Fist Bump, for a bit. Together we can show the world what we can do. You are next to me and I'm next to you. Push me on through. Sorry to any fellow vegans watching, that may have been a bit cheesy for you. But that's not the point I'm trying to make. Listen to this segment from the final boss music in Sonic Mania. What, you're still not convinced this is a tie-in? Alright, let's look at Sonic's pose in Sonic Mania's true ending next to his first appearance in the Sonic Forces trailer. All this gives me the sinking feeling that Sonic Mania might have originally been commissioned to be a glorified promotion for Sonic Forces. Even if that is the case, at least we got a pretty kick-ass game out of it, even if it is... tainted. I feel like this game deserves to stand on its own as a revival of classic Sonic rather than a follow-in to what will probably be another mediocre modern Sonic game. Oh, but Cyan Lime, Sonic Forces is going to be good! Yeah, we'll see about that. In addition to the main gameplay, Sonic Mania features a time attack mode and a competition mode. Time attack is pretty much what you'd expect. You play through the game's levels with the aim of beating them as quickly as possible for a shot at getting on the online leaderboards. There's also a neat little feature that lets you quickly return to the start of the level by holding a certain button for a couple of seconds. This is really cool as it saves you from having to restart from the pause menu every time you screw up. I tried this mode out on Chemical Plant Act 1 and got a time of about 1 minute and 25 seconds. I could probably do better, but it's not bad for a start. Man, only number 1164. Must be lots of really good players at the top. Oh. Oh. Seems legit. In competition mode, you play against a friend through some of the game's levels. It's basically a race, although apparently your score is taken into account too, so getting to the goal first doesn't necessarily mean you've won. I like that this mode was included, but there were a couple things that bugged me about it. First of all is the immediately obvious, the way everything's stretched and squished to fit on the screen. It looks pretty bad, and they could have avoided it by either using some kind of border or just increasing each player's field of view to be a bit bigger. Also, the other problem I have is that the multiplayer is local only. There's no online play at all. I get that this mode's probably mostly here for the console versions, where you can sit on the couch and play a few rounds with a friend, but I really don't see why online play couldn't have been included as well. I wish you could play with a friend over the internet or even get matched up with a stranger. I think that could be really fun, although obviously they'd have to add in some kind of anti-cheat. Speaking of which, if you're going to have online leaderboards in your game, you'd better make sure there's some kind of anti-cheat, because people will take advantage of the lack thereof. Exhibit fucking A. 
Also, before I get to the end here, I want to talk a bit about the opening cutscene. Sadly, it's not really much of an opening cutscene because the only way to get it to play is to idle on the title screen for a while. I think we can all agree that it's gorgeous, and everyone was really excited about it because it's a lot like Sonic CD's opening. While it's fantastically animated and fun to watch Sonic hopping through rings and fighting with the heavy cop, it doesn't really connect to the story in the way Sonic CD's did, with the scene ending with Sonic running up toward Little Planet where the game takes place. That, and I honestly found the accompanying music a little boring, especially when contrasted with the rest of the game's soundtrack. All in all, Sonic Mania's opening scene doesn't really feel like part of the game. Its inclusion pretty much feels like nostalgia bait, albeit very sexy nostalgia bait. So, what's the final verdict on Sonic Mania? I might have diluted this a bit in the review with, you know, my constant nitpicking and criticism, but I really, really like Sonic Mania. I think it's a worthy successor of the classic Sonic games, and I really hope the team responsible gets the opportunity to make similar games again in the future. The game is not perfect, though. There are a few bugs that keep the game from feeling as professional as it could, and some parts of the game feel unbalanced or even outright clunky. Sonic Mania also seems to be trying to tell a story, but not at all committing to telling it well. This leads to a very confusing and dissatisfying experience in this regard, and definitely isn't one of the game's strong points. The implications of the true ending also kind of soured the experience for me a little bit. If you watch the spoilery part of the review, you'll know what I'm talking about. Taking into account the good and the bad of Sonic Mania, I've decided to give it 4 stars. And on account of my upcoming knee surgery, um, it might be just a little while before the next video goes up, so uh, make sure you subscribe to see that when it comes up, and I'll see you then.